Hey, you're all right? Yeah, I'm all right. My ego's <laughs> Looking to hit a Vermont mountain for your next ski trip? Mad River Glen probably isn't the first one that comes to mind. With only about 100 acres of trails, a ban on snowboarders, and limited on-mountain maintenance, East Coast travelers often overlook Mad River for the larger destinations. But Mad River Glen really isn't designed for the typical ski resort crowd in the first place, and a number of circumstances make the mountain about as raw as it gets for inbounds northeast skiing. In this video, we'll go through Mad River Glen's overall mountain experience, and then we'll go through how the resort stacks up in our overall rankings. If you find this information helpful, be sure to like this video and hit subscribe so you don't miss any of our content. And if you haven't already, be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram, where you can follow along for exclusive, real-time takes on the mountains we visit. Mad River Glen offers perhaps the most natural experience of any Vermont ski resort. Snowmaking and grooming are both quite limited, leading to little patch-up of thin cover and hidden obstacles. However, these circumstances lead to some of the gnarliest expert terrain on the East Coast. Natural obstacles abound across the resort, with cliffs, moguls, trees, and bare ground all fair game. Frozen waterfalls aren't even out of the question. And these challenges aren't confined to any one resort area, with perilous lines present across varying lifts and elevations. Many mountains get easier near the base, but in a lot of cases, Mad River Glen really doesn't. That being said, Mad River Glen's lack of resiliency measures really hurts its reliability. If it's been several days since the previous storm, or a freeze-thaw cycle has occurred, major problems start to pop up. Significant trail closures are a common occurrence during even the core winter months, especially when it comes to advanced and expert runs, and even if they're open, trails can become spotty or icy to the point of near unskiability. When conditions become unfavorable, don't even think about cutting into the woods. And if things get really bad, full resort closures aren't even unheard of. As a result, booking a trip to Mad River Glen months or even days in advance can be a risky proposition. February is typically the best month for good conditions, but it's still not a guarantee, with plenty of variable condition days throughout even that month. Mad River Glen does see its fair share of natural snow throughout a typical season. This accumulation is consistent enough to fill in rather hairy terrain just enough to make it skiable, making for the perilous inbounds lines the resort is known for. Additionally, the resort limits lift ticket sales on a daily basis, meaning that the snow doesn't get tracked out as quickly as one might expect. That said, expect thin cover and some bare sections on advanced and expert runs even on the best days. You go to Mad River Glen because of the quality of its expert terrain, not because it's a well-rounded destination for all abilities. With just 115 acres of trails, Mad River Glen is much smaller than all noteworthy competitors and much more akin in size to many day trip mountains. Beginner and intermediate options are slim, with only a handful of groomed trails, leaving very little variety for less proficient skiers. Beginners who do end up at Mad River Glen will find the best options off the mellower Birdland chair, this area does offer some pretty cool green runs, but the overall terrain zone is fairly small. Intermediates will probably find their best terrain off the Sunnyside chair, although the blues off that lift aren't always groomed. There's also one blue route off the top of the single chair, but it takes a small uphill section to get to, which won't be everyone's forte. And it turns into a flat green trail about halfway down. Beginners can check out that flat green section by getting off at the mid-station of the single chair, but riding alone may not be the most enticing proposition for less experienced skiers. Intermediates can also check out the lower mountain practice slope, leave it to Mad River Glen to have a blue rated bunny hill, but the terrain is short and not really that notable. But Mad River Glen does have some advantages when it comes to family friendliness. The small footprint and singular base area make it very easy to keep track of others in your party, and if it really is your first time skiing, there is a true learning area and rope tow at the base of the mountain. In addition, the Birdland Zone's isolated nature means that less experienced guests in this area will not need to face more aggressive skier traffic, except when traveling down to the base. Trail signs are carved out of wood and a bit easy to miss, but they're kept up well, which tampers down the issue somewhat. Some expert trails are difficult to find, but this is somewhat by design and you do kind of have to know what you're doing to find the most daunting obstacles at the resort. There are trail maps posted at the top of lifts, but they're hilariously old school. 
It's also worth noting that Mad River Glen doesn't have a double black rating, so the single black designation is the highest difficulty level at the resort. Mad River Glen is an old school mountain, and that includes when it comes to its lifts. The resort's four chairlifts are low capacity fixed grip chairs, three of which are doubles. The remaining lift, which serves the mountain's full vertical and toughest terrain, is a one of a kind single chair. In fact, it's the only one left in operation in the lower 48 states and only one of two left operating at a ski resort on the continent. The single chair is the fastest traditional fixed grip lift in North America, so while you can't chat it up with a neighbor, the journey up isn't terribly sluggish. That said, at this point, basically every other Vermont mountain has high speed lifts, and those who are used to the creature comforts of a more modern lift setup may be disappointed with Mad River Glen. Mad River Glen's low capacity makes the mountain naturally inefficient at shuffling guests up the slopes. However, the resort mitigates this issue somewhat thanks to the daily lift ticket caps mentioned earlier. On the busiest days, only a fraction of the folks who try to buy tickets are able to secure them. This means that even on powder days or during the holidays, lift lines are never longer than 10 or 15 minutes, even at the single chair. Lines for the sunny side double chair are rarely longer than a few minutes long as well. And as for the lower level Birdland and Practice Slope chairs, you'd probably see pigs fly before finding notable lines on those chairs. Part of the reason Mad River Glen is able to be so restrictive on ticket and pass sales is because unlike essentially every other ski resort in North America, Mad River Glen is controlled by a skier owned cooperative. This means that the resort has no incentive to make a profit and is run with the intention to preserve as much of the experience as possible. As a result, Mad River Glen feels about as uncommercialized as it gets, with one of the most local vibes of any resort in Vermont, let alone all of North America. The resort hasn't seen any major aesthetic or terrain changes since 1967, and it feels it. The mountain isn't tall or large enough to afford the same spectacular vistas as some competitors, but there are still plenty of beautiful views of the Mad River Valley and surrounding mountain ranges, and a lack of buildup results in a one with nature feeling. Mad River Glen is a no-frills mountain, but for guests who get cold, there are warming huts at the top of both the single and sunny side chairs. A lodge is present at the base of the Birdland area as well, with small food items available to buy. The base lodge has a cafeteria with some of the most reasonably priced food we've seen at any ski resort. Mad River Glen is located in central Vermont's Mad River Valley, about three and a half hours from Boston and five and a half hours from New York. The resort is also about three hours from the Canadian city of Montreal. The final hour or so of the drive from any direction involves state roads that aren't always well maintained, so visitors should make sure to bring the proper vehicle on their trip. Public transportation options to the Mad River Valley are essentially non-existent, and while there is public bus service within the valley, it doesn't directly serve Mad River Glen during the daytime hours. But unlike at many competitors, parking is free and the traffic up the Mad River Glen access road is rarely a major issue. Mad River Glen lacks public on-site lodging, but plenty of accommodations exist within a short driving distance of the mountain. Options range from charming economical inns to luxury condo rentals, but they book up quickly on busy weekends and holidays. Hostel Tavari, a shared room hostel a short drive from the mountain, features a social on-site bar and is really the only cheap accommodation within reasonable commuting distance of the resort. Mad River Glen isn't known for its nightlife, but the base area has a charming bar with lots of historical relics. Mad River Glen's shareholders often hang out in this bar, so grabbing a beer here after a day on the slopes can be a great way to learn about the inner workings of the mountain. Depending on where you're staying, there are some solid casual bars in the town of Warren that can be accessed via the free Mad River Valley shuttle bus, and you can find evening bands at a few venues on weekends. However, if true nightclubs or a rowdy party scene are your thing, you won't really find them around Mad River Glen. Mad River Glen is notoriously unreliable and incredibly tough to master, but if you get there on the right day, it's a whole lot of fun. While it's not the best mountain to specifically book an in advance trip to, or for snowboarders in any capacity, it's an excellent choice for skiers looking to push their ability level to the brink without splurging for a trip out west. The resort is best enjoyed if you already happen to be checking out other ski resorts in the area, such as Sugarbush, and conditions are decent. While lift tickets are demand-based, they're never above $100, 
but be careful because on a good day, they sell out quickly. Now let's go through how Mad River Glen stacks up in our overall rankings, which are determined by the following 10 category mountain score. Mad River Glen sees high quality natural snowfall for Vermont, and the resort gets a 6 for snow. On the other hand, almost non-existent snowmaking and scant grooming leave Mad River Glen highly susceptible to the elements, and the resort gets a 2 for resiliency. Mad River Glen is small at just 115 skiable acres and 450 acres from boundary to boundary, and the resort gets a 2 for size. Mad River Glen boasts some of the most intriguing expert terrain in all of North America, but beginner and intermediate options are quite limited, and the resort gets a 4 for terrain diversity. Mad River Glen's steep, narrow lines and abundance of insane natural obstacles make it one of the most challenging mountains not just in the east, but just about anywhere and the resort earns a 9 for challenge. Mad River Glen's single chair is quite unique, but all lifts are low capacity and the resort gets a 2 for lifts. Despite this low capacity, lines never get too bad thanks to limits on lift ticket sales and the resort earns a 6 for crowd flow. Mad River Glen's base lodge, warming huts, and mid-mountain snack hut are no frills but decent stopping options and the resort gets a 5 for facilities. Mad River Glen's small size and singular base area make it straightforward to get around, and the resort earns an 8 for navigation. And finally, mountain aesthetic. Mad River Glen is way smaller than much of its competition, but it's about as uncommercialized as it gets and possesses a unique natural beauty, earning the resort a 6 in this category. These categories add up to an overall score of 49, placing Mad River Glen 9th in Vermont as of April 2023. Mad River Glen's old school character means it doesn't have the lifts, snowmaking, or grooming to compete with the most well rounded destinations in the state. But given its much smaller comparable size, Mad River pretty much has to present a unique argument to stand out in this very competitive state, and it does so with its daunting, unrefined footprint. The resort probably won't see any notable changes for the foreseeable future, but for skiers who appreciate what the resort has to offer, that's not at all a bad thing. For more information on Mad River Glen and over 80 destination ski resorts across Vermont, the East Coast, and North America, check out peakrankings.com. See you for the next one.